Hello and welcome everybody. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I've recently started uh, getting more and more into game development. I'm looking at programs like Godot and things like that and I discovered a really cute, really interesting little engine called uh, Pico 8. Um, it's a fantasy col uh, console. Make your own cartridges and browse the create cr uh, Cardverse in Sprite. Now, cards, uh, they're referred to like the physical copies of, of cards. Um, if you run the program, this is basically what it looks like. Um, so, um, here is the paid version that you can download. Um, Pico 8 is a fantasy console for making, sharing and playing tiny games and other computer programs. It feels like a regular console but runs on Windows, Mac, Linux. When you turn it on, the machine greets you with a command line, a suite of cartridges, creation tools and an online cartridge browser called Splore. Uh, you don't need the desktop version to actually use Pico. You can use it in the browser but for those of you who have downloaded uh, or bought the Pico uh, program on your computer, uh, I have something quite interesting to share with you. Uh, so if you're on the website, it's all, all cool. You get these magazines where they talk about different things, uh, tutorials, and nerdy teachers give great tutorials. There's this brilliant little cheat sheet that you could have. And what I did is I broke up the most important bits of the cheat sheet and I added it to the background. Now this is what my background looks looks like at um, at the moment. Um, this is the the desktop um, the desktop background that I made. Uh, that it would work for ultra wide screens and also 16 by 9, which I have. And basically, it, I didn't like having the Pico 8 just sort of floating around, and I didn't like having it in uh, in a large screen. So I created this. It fits in perfectly in this little box. So it feels like you're working on the TV. And then I have things like you know the uh, the, the the color numbers, uh, sprites, uh, the controls, shapes. This, how the screen layout works, the operators, so on. Got some sticky notes here for the notes for to create the music and so on. Um, and you can do the sticky notes what you like. You can edit them, write on them if you like. If you want to use them f to separate your desktop icons, you can do that. Um, it's just a really helpful or a fun little way that I found um, to use Pico 8. So if I close this up, this is basically what it looks like. And then if I run Pico, it opens up in this little television screen. So I can still, I can go around, I can open up like my folders and so on. And then just jump straight back into Pico. Um, and then I've got like all of the information here. I have two screens, so it's nice for me to be able to to work. Um, and then I, on the other screen, I'll have some um, tutorials running, or maybe you know some music or a, or a, um, some podcasts whilst I'm I'm busy in Pico and. Um, and it just it just feels nice to have it in like a containing area with sort of the main controls and everything. And you can obviously put your your program your your projects. You can put it on the side over here. It's really up to you how you want to um, utilize this and and use it. I will have the download for the background uh, linked below as well as the link to the website which is really, really worth uh, checking out. Um, I just want to show you. So it's really as easy as that. Um, 
and there's schools resources you can submit there's their forums uh, with loads of helpful information and these are carts that people are, are working on so we can um, I mean we can and there are thousands and thousands of games being developed and what makes Pico really great is the fact that it is so small and it is restrictive just to make sure that you don't bite off more than you can chew especially if you're a beginner um, which I think is uh, really really great because I have Godot and for me to uh, to get carried away with Godot is super easy and also what it, what Pico 8 forces you to do is it uh, forces you to take the m minimal amount of um, resources and to make the game as fun and enjoyable as possible without um, without getting carried away and getting bogged down and be get becoming discouraged because you aren't making any progress uh, now you can obviously make all sorts of games people have simulated 3d games um, all of these interesting things um, very very cool it's super light on your machine if you have an emulator um, it's it's great you can it's and it's it's such a it's a it's such a perfect way to learn i want to uh what's this oh this looks like like i'm grow uh growing okay yeah so this is like a little farming simulator so these are seeds growing plants putting seeds and you, you it t teaches you mechanics and obviously with this you can't go and make something like uh, stardew valley but it does teach you some basics um, anyway I've, i'm starting to ramble on now but I will, um, I will have this in the link below. If you haven't tried out the software, I highly recommend it. Um, thank you so much for your interest, and I hope this helps. This is exactly what I needed. Uh, I didn't want to jump between windows too much. I think this really helps, and I think it looks pretty good as well. All right, um, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. A uh, thumbs up if you appreciate it and um, happy programming. Cheers.